Hey guys, Mr. Klein here, and behind me is a Doppler radar for a local TV station. So for most people, 2020 was a doozy of a year for Louisiana weather, with three hurricanes and two tropical storms making landfall during the hurricane season. Hurricane Barry's landfall the previous year was the first true hurricane landfall in seven years, and Hurricane Rita in 2005 was the last major hurricane strike. In many ways, 2020 was a jarring reminder that Louisiana is indeed a frequent landing spot for hurricanes. So on the eve of the 2021 North Atlantic hurricane season, we're going on a tour of Louisiana hurricanes from colonial times to 2020. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So Louisiana ranks third in the nation in hurricane strikes in the past 120 years, only behind Florida and Texas. So Florida's number one ranking has a lot to do with the fact that most of the state lies directly in the path of where most hurricanes travel, and geography plays a similar role for Louisiana. Plaquemines Parish has the second most direct hits of hurricanes since 1900 with 27, only behind Monroe County and Florida's 33. So the reason, of course, has to do with the Mississippi Delta sticking out far into the Gulf of Mexico, just like how Monroe County includes the Florida Keys that are sticking out into the Gulf as well. Southeast Louisiana may get hit with the majority of hurricanes, but Cameron Parish's long coastline accounts for all strikes on the western part of the state. Also for Cameron Parish, global wind patterns conspire to make it a prime target for hurricane strikes. The Texas-Louisiana border is where traveling hurricanes are pulled almost directly north by upper level winds. So really, if you're interested in learning why hurricanes go where they go, you can watch the video I have on hurricane dynamics right here somewhere. So three caveats before we get going. So the first is that we are only going to consider hurricanes rather than tropical storms, with some notable exceptions. Also, there will be a couple of storms that didn't make landfall in Louisiana, but they heavily impacted part of the state enough to warrant a mention. Finally, we're not going to go into detail about every storm, so the lack of historical records is one reason for that. But the second is that general, hurricanes generally cause similar types of damage even though it's varying in intensity. So there's no sense in repeating the same things over and over and over again about storms. So it wouldn't be appropriate to begin a history of hurricanes in Louisiana without discussing how Native Americans in the state dealt with these storms in the centuries and millennia before European settlement. So in my research, I really didn't find any Louisiana specific information about hurricanes, but we do know that tribes in Louisiana vary greatly in their lifestyles from completely settled with advanced agricultural practices to semi-nomadic moving from place to place either seasonally or as resources in the area they lived in became depleted. Regardless, tribes that live closer to the coast would be more severely impacted by those who live more inland. But those who did live along the coast likely had a really keen understanding of the environmental cues of an impending storm, allowing them more time to prepare or even evacuate, especially compared to the European settlers we'll look at in a second. The first reference to a hurricane was by Spanish explorer Panfilo de Narvaz, who was caught in the storm near the mouth of the Mississippi River in October of 1527. Sources state that the storm tossed this flotilla and, quote, tossed them around like driftwood. So over the next 150 years, Europeans eventually figured out the strategic importance of the Mississippi River for the control of trade in the interior of North America, and they began settling in this area, kickstarting what we know today as Louisiana and New Orleans. So the first Louisiana hurricane to re be recorded by settlers was in September of 1722, when a hurricane made landfall at the mouth of the Mississippi River. So the storm sent an eight-foot storm surge into the small settlement of New Orleans, overtopping the three-foot-tall levee at the Mississippi River. And as a result, it caused the first citywide flood of a hurricane in the city's history. So 36 buildings, including the town's hospital, were destroyed. Settlers built communities south of New Orleans along the natural levees for purposes of trade, but their location left them highly exposed to the effects of hurricanes, as strikes in 1740, 1776, and 1778 all destroyed the settlements there, leaving residents to be rebuilt from nothing. So in 1779, a strong hurricane made landfall and passed over New Orleans, altering the course of the history of the American Revolution in the process. So Spanish Governor Bernardo de Galvez had assembled a fleet to sail up the Mississippi River here to capture British-held Baton Rouge, but the storm damaged much of his flotilla, delaying his attack by several weeks. Living in New Orleans was, at the time, British scientist and plantation owner William Dunbar, whose observations of the eye passing over the city 
led him to give the first scientific explanation that hurricanes were indeed low pressure systems. The next summer, while New Orleans was rebuilding after the 1779 storm, another stronger hurricane swept through southeastern Louisiana, destroying much of the city, sinking all the ships anchored there, and ruining most of the crops in the colony. So luckily for the residents there, this was the last storm to strike the region in the, until the last storm of the 18th century struck the state in 1794. In the first half of the 1800s, we have at least seven hurricanes striking New Orleans, with New Orleans reporting hurricane conditions in 1800 and 1811. So in 1812, Louisiana became a state just in time for a major hurricane to hit New Orleans, causing a storm surge to flood the city for the second time in its history. Down at the Delta, things were far worse, where the storm surge completely overtopped the 15-foot walls of the new Fort St. Philip, killing most of the soldiers stationed there. Fast forward nearly 20 years, and after several near misses, the Great Barbados Hurricane of 1831 tore through southeast Louisiana after devastating the Caribbean island of Barbados. The storm surge wiped out the coastal community of Barataria, killing 150 people, and the winds of the storm created a 7 to 10 foot storm surge on Lake Pontchartrain that caused New Orleans' third citywide flood from a hurricane. Six years later in 1837, the famous Racers Hurricane made landfall near Venice, Louisiana. Now, the storm itself hugged most of the Gulf Coast before passing through Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. In New Orleans, a storm surge from the lake pushed inland, flooding the city for the fourth time, and most of southeast Louisiana experienced widespread agricultural losses as well. Now, throughout the 1840s, historical records begin showing the existence of storms making landfall in southwest Louisiana as the area was being more densely settled. So diaries by residents of Lake Charles refer to heavy rain and high winds in 1839, 1840, 1844, and 1846. Southeast Louisiana, on the other hand, was almost completely spared during this time, apart from a hit in 1855 that cut across the Mississippi Delta before fully devastating the Mississippi Gulf Coast. A year later, perhaps the most famous of the early hurricanes hit Louisiana was the last Isle or Ile Dernier hurricane that made landfall as a slow-moving Category 4 hurricane on the 10th of August, 1856. So in New Orleans, it was felt as a strong storm with high rainfall, about 13 inches in total over four days. Uh, the city itself shrugged off the storm as a minor hurricane until rumors of a disaster of the southwest on the resort island of Last Island, or like I said, Ile Dernier in French, which was a beach resort for the wealthiest in Louisiana. At landfall, about 400 people were trapped on the island and were subjected to the full fury of the storm, which destroyed virtually every structure on the island. Then, in the late afternoon, the 15-foot storm surge suddenly came ashore and completely submerged the island. So nearly half of the people on the island at the time died, and the remainder were left clinging to debris away rescue. In the aftermath, the island was actually cut in two by the storm surge and the resort area was never rebuilt. The hurricane devastated much of southeastern Louisiana and even into southwest Louisiana. It's even as far west as Abbeville, where the entire town was leveled, including tombstones being knocked down or broken by flying debris. So simply put, the last island hurricane was the most damaging hurricane to hit Louisiana at the time and continued to be the strongest hurricane to make landfall in the state until Hurricane Laura did last year in 2020. And with that, we're going to end the first of this four episode series. So as you've seen thus far, hurricanes making landfall in the state are actually a really common occurrence, even if the historical record during the earliest days was focused on the southeastern part of the state. In the next episode, we're going to complete a review of hurricanes in the 19th century, where the state goes through the tragedies of the Civil War and Reconstruction, and ends the century with another disastrous storm wiping out a coastal community off the coast of the state. And I will see you then for that episode.